What's up, everybody? This is Coach Stokes, Stokes House Boxing Academy. You got to stay ready so you ain't worry about getting ready, and I'm definitely staying ready with today's very special guest. I'm going to give you this brother's tell the tape. I'm going to tell you who he is. He was honorably discharged from the United States Marine Corps as he served on the presidential honor guard team under the nation's leadership of former President Jimmy Carter. He's been retired uh, for the past 15 years as a supervisor for a juvenile detention facility, as well as a case manager and counselor in the adult prison system. Um, he, got in fitness, he got into the fitness industry over 42 years ago, where he established Band Nation LLC, as well as being a regional master trainer at Ghost Gyms in Northern Virginia. His success and leadership within the field has led him to travel and train um, since, uh, uh, since dealing with the world's top athletes, uh, professionals. Um, he's went over, uh, over 32 countries, uh, which include Brazil, Colombia, Norway, Bangkok, Canada, and Russia, are just a few just uh, host uh, countries which have uh, held uh, him and banned uh, nation. His specialty is in resistance training with the bands, where he, uh, where he used to create multifunctional super functional, hardcore strength and conditioning for athletes in a variety of sports. Uh, sports such as boxing, uh, world champions, he, 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 um, he dealt with uh, celebrity uh, entertainers, Olympic gold medalists, NFL players, NBA players, uh, the list goes on. He's one of the most sought after trainers in the world when it comes to this industry of band nations. And he's a proud grandfather, one who keeps it real when it comes to his fitness and his motivation and passion when it comes to the sport. And he has a lot, a lot of coachisms. But his very favorite coachism that he, that he says all the time is, don't ask for what you're not willing to work for. My brother, my big brother, my Marine Corps brother, Coach Kelvin Moore. How you doing, big dog? Ooh, Ra. What's going Ooh, on, brother? <laughs> and let me just say this to start, man, no matter what we talk about going forward, you know, I'm just, I'm appreciative for the opportunity to be here having this conversation with you. And the thing that baffles people a lot of times when I'm, I'm talking about you, because I show them videos of not only just what you're doing, but how you train your sons and stuff. And I always tell them, but I never meant to do in person. Oh, no. So we've been, ro we've been rocking and rolling for years but we've never met in person. Even when I was out in the West Coast, not necessarily in your area, you were connecting me with different people, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Andre Ward's people, long story short. So I'm just grateful, man. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be on this. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Coach, man, humbly. Uh, and I, you know, um, I know I remember I just uh, bring, bring everybody up and get them uh, up to breast of everything. But when I, when I sent out the uh, text, man, I just sent you a text message and I was like, I like what you're doing. And um, I, I saw something that said that she was a Marine. So I was like, let me go ahead and uh, extend a, a, you know, a, a handout to him. And ever since then, brother, it, we have been locked at the hip ever since, man. I mean, yes, sir. you showed me the things, uh, I mean, the things you have done for me, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, across the nation from, from, from sending my son's uh, shoes to sending them uh, autographs, signed boxing gloves. Man, it's, it's, it's nothing but all love, coach. Um, let's jump right into it, coach. Let everybody know um, and get everybody up to speed about Band Nation. Well, simply put, you know, I've been blessed, the honor to be in the industry um, since about 1978 uh, or so. Um, I've never played a sport in my life, which baffles a lot of people in regards to some of the athletes and people that I've worked with, because I really got behind the science of it and how it works. Uh, I, I, I don't think I even told you this story, how I actually got involved in util, utilizing the bands. I was in the Corps <laughs> over at 8th and 9, Marine Barracks. Real quick, I was on a uh, uh, garbage detail outside messing around with some other cats, jumped off a dumpster, hairline fracture on my, my ankle, and I ended up having to put a cast on, and I went to the rehab for about four or five weeks. And so every time I would go into rehab, they'd hand me a band. And the first couple of times, they would be like, yeah, here you are, uh, Mr. Moore, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, they, I ended up saying, "Mom, this is real creative. And I just started utilizing it with my workouts and then studying the human anatomy and so on and so forth. And that's how I actually got into 
working out with bands. Really? Yep. So, so, so you got a little taste of it, but then you just magnified it on steroids. On steroids, yeah. <laughs> on steroids. Okay, yeah, I magnified <laughs> it on steroids. <laughs> hey, hey, because you know what? One of my favorite, I, I know you know what I'm about to say, but my favorite video that you got is <laughs> And Chop, <laughs> anybody knows uh, Demarcus uh, Corley? Chop stays in shape, man. Chop is one of them cats where he just love to fight. He loves staying in shape. Mm -hmm. But as I say, but <laughs> if you see this video, you will see, man. He he got to his breaking point. I want to ask you this, Coach. Yes, who sir. Are, who are some of the the the, the well known uh, athletes, celebrities that you have touched with the bands? Well, let me let me let me just make a comment about Chop Chop. Because <laughs> after we had the last conversation and I went back to that video, but that's how I actually got to start to work with Chop Chop. I had him come in for a consultation. Uh -huh. He told me he had never done, had a strength and conditioning coach throughout his whole career. You know, he done fought Floyd and everybody else. Yeah. So he was telling me he's, he's about to go over and fight for this title in Russia. You know, he wants to try it out. Long story short, I tried it out. He made it through about three or four minutes of the bands. And I love him to life even today because he's still be he's still one of my biggest cheerleaders in regards to like yourself in regards to what I do and the effectiveness is uh, there on. But I mean, you know, time has been uh, the Lord is God has been good to me, and time has been uh, on my side in regards. To, I would tell people all the time, Coach, it's about timing. I mean, I've showed up at places that athletes and entertainers have been at. I've got a chance to work with uh, uh, Bruce Leroy. Yeah, and that's 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 old school. Yeah, yes, that's the old school. People don't realize. Uh, Usher. Uh, I've had some. Uh, I've done some work with Kevin Hart. I've done some work with. Uh, and when you talk about the athletic side of it, uh, presently, again uh, on the boxing side, I'm working with uh, Gary Russell Jr. and all his brothers, etc. Yeah. Uh, Danny Garcia, it's a lot of guys that have that been in the camp. They've had a taste of these bands. They know what's going on. As a matter of fact, I thought it was interesting. So I, I'm hoping he bring both of us on. Uh, I talked to Shannon Briggs. I, I, I work with Shannon Briggs okay. at the Heavyweight Factory down in Miami. And I hear that this whole thing of the potential for him and Tyson to have this charity fight going on. So I hit him up and I was like, you know what, Shannon? And I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, he, I don't know if he's watching. He might be, or somebody might tell him. But at the end of the day, it was a chop chop moment <laughs> when I trained. Oh wow! <laughs> so, so Milton Lacroix, who was uh, one of the trainers, was one of the trainers down in Miami. He's actually out there working with uh, Jake Paul and his brother now. Okay. Uh, they 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 were gonna they were trying to get me to come out for that KSI that KSI or whatever the, that guy name is. They were trying to get me to come out there. Uh -huh. uh, to kind of work with the Paul brothers in regards uh, to to that fight, but you know it's a it's a list, Coach. Um, I mean, I could tell you again some of the other athletes I've worked. I got down. I'm down here in Ashburn, Virginia, so I, I work with several of the Redskins players. Yeah. Uh, I've worked with some NBA players. I actually worked with Ryan Gomes when he was in the league, and then I also worked with him and some of the players in the Big Three. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I, Ice Cube Lee, my apologies, Ice Cube Lee, and, um, you know, I, I, but I can tell you where I'm at, because I've been doing a lot of things on the, you talked about the things I've done for your son, I'm going to tell you where I'm at, I'm into, I'm really into, especially because I'm down here in uh, Loudoun County, I'm really into the young athletes, and like your son, I mean, he, he, he's going to be a world champion, remember I said that, anybody that's listening, because one of the things that's going to happen, obviously, with your coaching and expertise and because you did you did it so you got the side of the skill i'm gonna come on board of the side of the condition and it's gonna be non-stop i was asked a question real quick uh, the other day about who they thought were would be the winner out of um who was it uh, tank davis uh ryan garcia uh and i actually had a conversation uh, some months back with uh Devin haney's people and who they, they were saying who did they think that that would when if those uh, three of Teofilo Stevenson, uh, uh -huh. Lopez rather, who, who do they think would win out of that, that group of four people? And I told them the one that hires me. Oh, you heard that. Oh. Hey, you heard that. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You need to go out and you need uh, to, to see out this brother because this brother, he's serious when it comes to it. 
and he don't play. Coach, I want to know this. How long does your routine take? Uh, I'd say two, two, two things. Number one, it depends on the, the starting conditioning level of the athlete. But if it's somebody that's, and even with that, but if it's somebody that's, that comes to me for the first time, and I always say this, Coach, no disrespect to any trainer, uh, any strength conditioning guy. Um, I, I, I said this, and I'm definitely not, not going to go against the grain of what I said, because I see a lot of the guys working with some of the top guys now mm -hmm. that's incorporating. That's the new 2020 word they're using, but they're actually stealing my material. Uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, yeah. Um, the guy, when they come to me, they find that it's, it's a rude awakening because, again, I'm going to deal with it from a mechanical, functional, plyometrical, multifunctional perspective. And then that's just a part of doing what I do with the bands. But I also have a very unique and interesting aquatics program where I have a sled that goes in the water. I have a trampoline that goes in the water because I also do rehab services as, as uh, rehab as well as uh, corrective exercise. Okay. You know, I, I've seen you do a lot. I, I've seen you do an exercise the other day where you had a young cat with a kettlebell and you had a pad and he was coming mm. up. He's doing, well, like hip thrusters or hip swings mm -hmm. and coming up with a pad. What was mm -hmm. that working, Coach? Well, first of all, and again, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir telling you this as a boxing trainer, you know, the energy generated comes from the ball of your feet, yes. starts up the ball of your feet, up to, up to your quads, transfers at your hips, then gets to your shoulders, and eventually uh, the shoulder actually throws the punch. But the pad part, I can show you the drill, of swinging, him swinging and hitting the kettlebell, without getting too technical, uh, there's a neuromuscular response that happens that not only just shocks the body, but allows different muscle to get involved, which again, creates a greater level of force. So yeah. everybody out there that's thinking, that you can't enhance punching power, they didn't do their homework. I'm trying to tell you right now, because again, you're talking about the science behind it. Most people today, no disrespect to any of them, coach, they're doing drills, they're, they're connecting people with bands, et cetera, et cetera. But what I decided to do, my team said, I wanna, as you see me sometimes now in coach post, when I'm posting, I, I post, the, I post rather, excuse me, the formula of what's actually happening as opposed to just posting the drill. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, he's my man, like 50 grand. I just uh, DM'd him the other day, Earl Spence. I told him if they're going to try to set that fight off with Danny Garcia, even though I know Danny, he's my man, and Danny's a great dude. Uh, I've been going back and forth with him as well as Derek James. I just want to get in his camp for about two or three days, not to overcompensate in regards to what his team wants him to do, but join in because I can make Earl Spence uh, even better than he is, and I know that for a fact. I I'm, I want to, Coach, real quick, I want to get in camp. It almost happened a while, but I want to get in camp with uh, Adrian Broner. I guarantee you Adrian Broner will be a better fighter functionally, and whoever's doing the skill stuff, because he'll have the confidence because his power is up, his footwork is up, his, uh, his ability to maneuver, his transverse actions, all the stuff I can get to from a scientific perspective that happens with the human anatomy. Yes. I guarantee you, Adrian Broner, because he's, he's a great fighter, man. He, I mean, is. He, just needs, he just needs that work, I believe. No disrespect to the people training. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey B, if, you, you, we, if and when you do hear this, reach out to my brother here, for real. He going to get you on point, man, on all cylinders. Coach, this is what I want to know next. I want to know um, if somebody is looking for a good strength and conditioning trainer or somebody who um, works with the bands like yourself, what are the do's and what are the don'ts? What are the do's that you're looking for and what are the negatives that you want to stay away from? Man, you did you 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 got these questions, man. You, this is must be CNN, man. You, I'm ready for you. you man. with these questions. <laughs> <laughs> and it watch this because what it is, man, you forcing me to come to the surface with truth. Let me let me throw a tip, let me just throw this out here for the Adrian Broner uh, situation. And again, no disrespect to his trainers and his people and etc. I, I on my own ticket. I'd go out there, fly out there on my own ticket for about three days and work with him on my own ticket and wouldn't charge him a dime. That's saying and a that's, lot. That's for him. And that's, that's whomever else. But no disrespect to the people because sometimes, folks, you know this better than I do because you know the game better. A lot of these guys get these quote-unquote teams around them and you really want a team with expertise. 
I'm, pers I'm, I'm good friends with uh, uh, Mike Mancius. That's LeBron's trainer. I'm good friends with Michael Lancaster. He's trained Kobe, Kyrie, et cetera. So I've got a lot of guys who are, have a, a ton of knowledge in the industry who reach out to me in regards to things that they want to have, and I reach out to them vice versa. But that whole thing of picking a strength and conditioning coach, coach, I'm trying to tell you right now, uh, again, working with the Russells, the wonderful thing, I, I preface it by this, the wonderful thing about working with them for the past four years, Gary Russell Sr. calls me into the camp. He tells me exactly what he wants to work on with each of his sons. He gives me the green light. I do my job. And then when they get into the to sparring and the other stuff, he takes over from there. So I stay in my lane. Right. So I preface it to say that's point number one. I mean, it could be, I could do it by points, but I could say that would be the one of the main things. You don't want a guy coming into your camp trying to show somebody how to throw a jab, trying to – that's coach, that's you. So even when we talked about working with your son, you know, I could probably maybe uh, get, you know, add some insight, but at the end of the day, I want to work with you because physics, quickly – Sometimes when me and Gary Russell Jr., we sit out and we're talking, we're training, and I got him with a drill with some bands on. One of the things that I want to make, I tell him I want to make sure, is the band connection going to allow him to accurately throw the punch. I can't just do it for the sake of just doing resistance and doing it for the sake of giving him a workout because he needs to be proficient in throwing the punch because, remember, it's all position, and, you know, et cetera. He's got to be in the right position so the punch the right way so the bands is just uh, 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 an assistant or resistance to him throwing the punch, but it still has to be done accurately. The second thing that I would say when it comes to strength and conditioning coaches, when somebody walks in and they're starstruck or somebody walks in and it's all about the purchase or the price and it's not about the promise, right away you should be, you know, coach, I've, I've trained athletes in – Norway, I've trained athletes. I was over in, in, in Bangkok with Master Toddy. He's actually the same one. I think I talked about the last time I was on your show. He was the one that actually was in some of the Bruce Lee movies and gave him instruction. But when I went over there, mm -hmm. you know, and I got into these camps, the one thing that they saw was I came in and I surrendered it, basically everything that I knew regarding what they were trying to teach. But then when I came in, I put my whatever I was going to do on a display. And then the other thing is, the eye of the tiger, meaning you're the coach. Coach, you don't real recognize real. When yes. you walk in and see something, you're going to be like saying, uh, I appreciate that, but thanks a lot. That's why I love Gary Russell Sr. The first time they, I flew in from, from uh, Connecticut, or where I'm originally from, to D.C., because I was working with them even before I lived here. Uh, I walked in. We did the workout. Later on that evening, Gary Sr. came, called me over. He said, listen. And Gary, as a matter of fact, he said, listen, if what I saw I felt didn't fit what we were doing, I would have shook your hand and said, thank you very much. So real recognize real. So when you walk in, you know what your son needs. That's right. You know what the fighter needs. So when you come in, you got to see, because that's why I want to more than just coach motivate. I want to educate the athlete. And it's not just boxers, but we're talking about boxers, but football players. And the sad reality, coach, you'd be surprised how many athletes in four decades and in 32 countries that I've seen that don't know basics in regards to fundamentals and mechanics and the utilizations of hips, 60% of your power comes from your core. Those things are not being taught. People are just, I'll use uh, Earl Spencer's term from the mud. People are just getting it because they have brute strength and they're athletic, et cetera. And that doesn't mean that's the only thing that Earl Spence has. He's, he's one of my favorite dudes I got in my little man cave he signed a glove for me except he always treats me with the utmost respect but we we got i i strip them down from what they think they know and i build them up and they come back stronger quicker faster better i love that i love that so let me ask you this by using the band's bites if you were using uh heavy weights or barbells how much more faster will you see uh, a, a rise when it comes to performance good question again you got to remember, you're talking about muscle strength versus functional strength. Okay. So, you know, even with your son, how old is your son, uh, Coach? He's nine years old. Okay. Even your son, I'd have him doing some weights right now. See, when people look at the philosophy, the mentality, to what they heard, et cetera, et cetera, 
well, he's too young to lift weights, et cetera. I'm, I promise you, uh, how about this? If you watch The Last Dance, remember the one thing that Michael Jordan said was after the, he got his butt kicked the second time by the Pistons, then he incorporated weights. Just imagine if he was stronger to take the beatings and the other stuff that happened. So you learn as you go along. And even for a nine-year-old, because what I'm not going to do with your son is have your son trying to deadlift 200 pounds at nine years old. Right. But you can incorporate, because you're talking about skeletal muscle, which is, is emphasized and utilized when you're talking about weight uh, training, et cetera. When you're talking about the resistance side, you're talking about more the functional side, time under tension, central nervous system, uh -huh. et cetera, et cetera. And those are the things that's going to increase your cardio, your endurance, your pliability, your mobility, your agility. I mean, the list goes on. So it's, it's a different animal when you do it. But when you do it right, when you do it understanding what you're doing as opposed to uh, copying something uh, that you've seen. Because you don't want that nine-year-old uh, uh, superstar that you have that down the road, number one, in anybody's hands. Second of all, you, don't, you want your son to be an original, not a copy. So why would you have somebody training them that they copied something? You know what that's like real quick, coach. That's like me turning around and watching a, a video of LeBron and then go out on the basketball court and think I'm going to be LeBron. Yeah. Some trainers will look at this as hate and disrespect and what do you think he knows? And the one thing I don't do, and my staff gets on me all the time, I'm not about creating followers. I'm about creating leaders. So if you unfollow me, you block me, God bless you, man. I'm still going to, I'll use one of Floyd Mayweather's line with respect, I'm still going to go to the bank and cash this check, and they're not going to ask me how many followers I got. That's right. And that's just the end of the story. That's right, and, and, and that's the reason why I even deal with you, Coach, because you, you was real from the jump street, and you're not one of them cats that's out there that's trying to just gain followers and tell people whatever just so that, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, you can make money. No, it's not about that. Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you this right now, you uh you gave love to my my sister. I don't know if you know, but uh peace my sister Brittany. Um she's pregnant. She's about to have my nephew in a couple months. So I will be in your area in July, coach. Oh yes. Is your son coming? Her and her yeah, a little yeah, a little boy, little boy. Her, no, uh, my, I'm saying is your son coming. Oh yeah, he uh, yeah, oh, he's well, gonna be there. He's gonna be there. So you know my link, coach. Let's let's set it up. All yeah. we got last so we already know that outside of this conversation and this we I'm gonna, we're going to set up some training. Yeah, no, I got no, you covered. Yeah, the one, and watch no. this. Coach, listen to me. And I got you covered at no cost to you. Don't, don't say nothing else. Let's move on to the next question. Coach. All right. What else you want to talk about? You know, you know I'm going to get you back on in somehow. So <laughs> go ahead. Hey, Coach, this, I, I, I want to get serious. And this is for my coach. <laughs> because you have a lot of coaches that want to get within the industry. Um, and, and, and a lot of them, you know, you, you, you've been in the game for over 42 years. You know how this, this, this game is a trip. You know, it is a roller coaster. It's up and down. And you got to mm -hmm. stay, stay tough. What would you tell somebody that's a coach that's coming in uh, when it comes to this game, you know, uh, how, how, how he should be able to survive? How, how, you know what I'm saying? How, how can he get by daily, you know, uh, when it comes to this? Good question, again, to repeat myself, but let me fall back just one quick second to say, because when people hear 42 years, and when people hear 32 countries, two things about that. Number one, uh, when you talk about the, I got into the industry after I got into the Marine Corps, and I was working at, most people are probably not old enough, I was working at Holiday Health that later become, became Valleys, et cetera, so on and so forth. And so people would ask the question, okay, but how come we haven't heard of him? Because in the initial stages of my training, it was all simultaneous. As I retired 15 years ago, I was, a, as you talked about in the resume, I was a supervisor in both the juvenile and the adult prison system. And so let me add this, this caveat. Every good trainer should have a social service component, which means that you know how to deal with the, both the physical and the mental and psychological, because I was a case manager counselor of athletes because 90% of it is mental. I don't care what drill you copy, what drill you do. I'm trying to tell you right now, that's what made, all due respect to a whole bunch of fighters, that's what made Floyd Mayweather the man he was. The dude was so mentally locked in and I got a chance to meet him. I got a chance to go to his fight. He signed the glove for me, et cetera, long story short. But for those people entering into the industry, understand 
this one valuable piece that I can share with you, but there's a few, but it should be all about cooperation and not competition. Gotcha. You can't come in trying to compete and get more followers than somebody. And, uh, you know, uh, he worked, you know, coach, you got people out here. I go, I, I surfed and you got people out here calling themselves celebrity trainers. And I go through their page trying to find a celebrity and then come to find, I guess they're the celebrity. I mean, at the end of the day, humility, but at the end, of, it's not about competition. It's what, it's how we embrace one another it's how we met and obviously you know being marines that's one key thing but being on a different wavelength you know you said what's up i said what's up i saw what you did it fit and we just continue to uh reach out to one another share with one another share with the wife etc cetera, etc cetera. that whole thing of not of understanding rather it's all about cooperation and not competition there's a other many pieces but i'll also say this i i use this as one of my coachisms most people can't hear what you're saying because what you're doing is too loud. Mm. You can't, I'll say it again, coach, I'm going to back it up. Most people can't hear what you're saying because what you're doing is too loud. If your sole purpose is to turn around and have people on your social media that work out or on your Instagram that work out, and, and I, I highly recommend you get on social media. It's a free vehicle for advertising. Yes. But at the end of the day, if your only focus is to let somebody see what you did and this is who I am and this is what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera, you got a client on your page that in January that you started out and all you've been doing is manipulating, collecting a check and copying other people. And by June, you still got the same lady on your page doing the exercise. The real people are going to not be looking at the exercise. They're going to be looking at the progress of the client. Right. So you now have the client on your page that they've been watching you since, and here we are in June, and there's no change in your client, but there's several changes in the drill. While you got trainers out here now, yep, coach, you say go there. You got trainers out here now. Some of them got two pages, so they'll follow you, but then they'll have another page that they copied your stuff, that they have that on, that you're unaware. And the bottom line is this, is that well, since we all have been given a little bit of creativity. I, I come up with drills as I sit down and I understand the science behind it. But the long, short of it, Coach, at the end of the day, you know, you talk about you, we've got to be at a place where if there is no resume or results mm -hmm. and there's no enhancement in the performance, you're only going to be in this industry only but for so long. Yes. It's a 90, it's an, I'm sorry, Coach, it's an $86 billion a year industry. 10% of personal trainers are making 10 billion of that, but only one to 2% of those athletes, I mean, of those trainers are actually making any money. And think about this, they're projecting, even with what's going on, 42% increase in the fitness industry over the next three years. And that's gonna primarily be predominantly uh, be led and spearheaded by women. But the, a lot of the women, and here they go, they're going to probably block me, coach, or whatever. Yeah. A lot of the women, yeah. I, you go to their page and they got, coach, we've been out here. So how they got, got 300,000 followers? Right. And the end of the day, you could either buy them, and that's okay if they're doing that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, listen, every, every now and again, I like to see somebody with a bikini or a top and sometimes no top. And so their marketing strategy and advertisement is all about selling nudity, et cetera, et cetera, which is why you're going to have an increased audience, but it has nothing to do with the progression and the betterment of a client. Thanks. And you heard it from, from, from Big Dog right there. Coach, I want to ask you this. What are your ambitions and drives for Band Nation and for the future? Well, i, I tell you where I messed up, and I learned it a long time ago, but it's coming, the reality is coming even closer. July 2nd, I'll be 61. Wow. Uh, yeah, and so here's the, here's the problem, Coach. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. I, 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 I turned around and I, I did not build upon legacy. I understood my history, how I started. My destiny was to get on the road and train people across this globe, et cetera, and I did some of those things. But then legacy is gonna be interrupted because I never trained anybody to do what I do. So at the end of the day, Coach Stokes has got to start prepping little Coach Stokes's, not just his son, but other little coaches to watch this, to branch out, 
and to go out and to do the things that you do, but you have to teach them. It's kind of tough in this industry now because everybody's about trying to come up with something new and it's about a drill and some of the craziness that happens. Also, coach, you got trainers out here. I mean, people out here that follow me. And so when that trainer does a drill that I do, they already know where they got it from. And the trainer is really kind of oblivious to the reality of what's really going on. But that's one of my biggest things that I really got to be more passionate about, which is helping to establish my legacy. That when I step off the scene, I don't want to just sell a band. I don't want to just give out a band. And I've been blessed to be able to bless a ton of people with just free bands, just to help people out during this time, et cetera. But I don't want to just my legacy to be associated, connected with something that's marketable. I mean, just tangible from a marketing perspective. I want people to understand or to see that I can still do what coach taught me 10, 15 years. Coach, I'm going to tell you right now. You see me? I stand. I raise my right hand. I'm willing to learn everything from you, Coach. For real. Let's go. Let's go, Coach. For real. Let's do it. Let's, go. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So now, watch this. So this show becomes the ladies and gentlemen, the formal introduction of the Bandmaster Two. No, the Bandmaster Sequel. Right. And That's watch right. this. I'm not going to not teach you because I pride myself on what I do. And I'm not going to not teach you to the best of my ability, to a different, to a heightened level of excellence and let you get out here and falter with my name associated with it. So that's a conversation we can have and I'm more than willing, willing to do it. Man, I got two other guys. You'll be the one of those, those two. So it's three people, well, it's two, one guy, another young lady and yourself. So I got three people that I got to formulate a plan. I mean, this COVID has really thrown some things off, man, uh, that I'm going to get massive. Because, for example, the young lady that you had, the boxer, on your program on Sunday from that's over in Australia, right yeah. after the show, yeah, she contacted me and, what's up? And you do this, and I looked through your stuff. And when I said, she was like saying, after the COVID, let's talk. How can I – She was her question was, how can I get you to come over here and train me, et cetera? So there you go. So if I can't go, I'm going to send my protege. I'm going to send coach. Or me and coach get on that plane, and here we go in Australia, and we're going to turn it out when we get over. Let's do it. Let's do it, coach. I'm going I'm to hold you. I've been wanting to ask you that for the longest, man, but it's been, it's been about three years since I, I – <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I want to ask you so bad, but I know you're busy all over the place. Coach, I, I want to I wrap it up, and I want you to do – I want you – it's a thing I call going 12 rounds with Coach Stokes. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna give you 12, 12 off the top uh, questions, and you gotta answer them. All right? Is it one word? Uh, yeah, it's one word. Uh, my response has to be one word. Yes. Oh, or you, no gotta, you, gotta, you gotta pick. You gotta pick. Okay. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Ding, ding. All right. First question is: manicure or pedicure? Pedicure. Okay. Temptations or stylistics? Stylistics. Oh, wow. Well, okay, okay. Are you a hunter or a gatherer? Hunter. What is your least favorite thing about humanity? Racism. Okay. You're a new addition to a crayon box. What color would you be and why? I would be off-white. Because just like when you wash something in the machine uh, and you don't particularly separate it properly and so there's other colors in it that could potentially blend into it, uh -huh. I like to metamorphose into something different. And I, that's why I like change. I like difference. I like creativity. So I, I would be that off-white that if you put me in with a red or orange and a blue, you know, some of that will blend into what I'm doing. And so I'll be multicolored and multicultural. And you, you, you can go anywhere. You can fit in anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Round number six. Bring one, one, one back from the dead. Number one, Malcolm X. Number two, Martin Luther King. And number three, Nelson Mandela. 
Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Martin. Oh, or boy. Uh, Big one, brother. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Nelson Mandela. Mm. I'm gonna go with Nelson Mandela only because of uh, he would be man. That's uh, I can't even say what I was about to say because I what I was gonna say is that he would probably be more inclined to be in tune with the root of our people. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything when it comes to uh, uh, the other two because again, it, all it takes is a little research and a little homework and a little study. But I'll take Nelson with that. Okay, all right. Um, I got a question for you right here, uh, round number seven. You're going down a steep slope, a steep snowy hill on a bus going 100 miles per hour. Where are you sitting on the bus? The front, the middle, or the back? I'm gonna sit in the front. Why? I'm gonna sit in the front, I'm gonna sit in front, in the front because the, let, let me, whatever's gonna happen, let me deal with the initial impact and deal with whatever's gonna happen right off the rip. I don't wanna to have to be in the back of the bus and the bus tip over, the people in the front get saved, and everybody in the back get thrown off, get thrown off the ledge, the people in the middle, the accordion effect, the bus gets crushed, some of the people in the front survive, some of the people in the rear survive, but the people in the middle, just whatever's gonna happen. You know, I've just, I've always been that person in life because again, all the wonderful things that I'm telling you about what God has helped me to, to go through and endure, I have another side of life where, you know, uh, I'm not too pl proud to talk about, but at the same time, you know, it has helped me in my journey. And then also that cat, you don't know what that bus driver has been doing, so you might have to jump in, in his seat and might say it, might have to save everybody. Well, you know, us Marines, yeah. and nothing but, you know, snap yeah. him by his hair, dude. <laughs> and pull them aside and take over the bus. Okay, all right, coach. Hey, going to round number eight. If there was a movie produced about your life, who would play you and why? Jeez. Uh, I'm just, you know, I mean, it, it, it's a hard to replicate because, uh, you know, uh, some of the things in life, you know, because uh, some people would cheer and rah-rah the fact that, you know, uh, coach trained this athlete or that entertainer. But at the same time, I was facing 20 years in prison. Mm. So I got a whole story, man, a whole gamut. I've been clean for about 20 years. I done did everything under the sun in regards to drug usage. And then from that, uh, I've on the flip side of it. The, I've been blessed, man. I, as you talked about in my resume, I ended up with a first-class White House clearance, believe it or not. And I worked at Camp David for three months when President Jimmy Carter was the president. So I, I, I'm a I'm a very interesting type person, but at the same time, uh, I got some stuff, man. It, it'd be hard to it'd be hard, but I and I couldn't think of it. Okay, I'd have to find somebody. Because okay. you'd have to, you'd have to be a little. I mean, you could, you would probably be one of the people that could, if I had to think of it, could sneak in. Because you got to be a little off center, and that you are. You're a little off center. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, round number nine. We we get into the championship rounds now. Choose an athlete from the past you love to train on your bands. Now or the past? Now. Today, oh, somebody from the past, somebody from the past that you would love to train today, if you could. Anybody. Bob Sapp. Oh, wow. Bob Sapp, who I met over in uh, Thailand, and he got a little taste of what's going on. I actually got a picture with him, et cetera. He's one of the biggest draws in Japan. He's a funny dude. Uh, you know, nice guy. You wouldn't think it because he's very intimidating. What, he's about six, six, three hundred some pounds. A straight up animal. Still wow. holds the record for uh, uh, what is it? Pay per view for MMA or UFC, whatever he does. But yeah, it was an interesting. If I mean, you talk about the past, because I've done some in the past, but him, yeah, I had a great time with him. Did did, did he make it through, Coach? 
Or did you burn him out? Uh, no, he never made. He 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 did about maybe eleven minutes. Okay, okay, all right, all right. This is the real coach. This is the real deal. And again, oh, I know it call is. it a brag. <laughs> they don't know though. <laughs> okay, hey coach, what is your favorite country that you visited? Wow. <laughs> Uh, I'd have to say I would probably say I don't. I could say Norway only because the genuineness over there. Uh, they call it the land of the midnight sun. You can drink water off the rocks, etc. Uh, but I, I'm I'm gonna go with Brazil. Brazil. Because, yeah, how they treated me over there, Coach. When I got over there, I actually went with a young lady who was very wealthy, and her 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 sister owned the gym over there. I trained her and got her in shape. She turned around and flew me over there to work out over there. But when I got there, man, I had a motorcade. The mayor was there. They opened up their doors. Man, they treated me like a straight-up celebrity for the two weeks out there. So I had a great time. So I'd have to say, because of that, Brazil, for sure. Brazil, Brazil. okay, okay. Getting down to the last two rounds, coach. Okay. If you were an animal, what would your inner spirit animal be? I'd say the silverback gorilla, man. Mm. Because at, even at, even at, because you know, coach, and other, some other people know, uh, you know, I always tell people all the time, don't let the silver hit. Don't let it fool you, because I still got some. I still got some gas left in my tank, and I'm pretty for a 60 year old. I'm pretty tough at what I do. Not necessarily in any particular skill set for sport, but I can still toss some weights around. I can still hang with the best of the best. Oh, brother, I, I see you deadlifting with the bands on. So I, <laughs> you ain't got to prove nothing to me. I already know what the deal is. <laughs> and the, the last and final round, coach. What is the last gift you've given to someone? The last gift that you remember? Yes, sir. Uh, it was, she opened up her mail on Friday saying that she received, I sent her some uh, bands. Ursula Alberta, she's actually out there on the West Coast with you. She was one of the people that was so instrumental when I, one of the few times, well, the many times I went out to LA, but she introduced me to the Charles Glass. She introduced me to so many people out there. She was very well connected. And, uh, I actually uh, trained her up in Runyon Canyon, up in the hills with the bands. And that's a workout that's unbelievable. Your man, Jerry Rice, he was, he was into that same modality and mindset. But uh, I sent her bands, told her, just like I was just telling you about when you get here and train, I said, listen, we've got three, four years in it. No, no I'm not going to charge you. I sent her the band. She responded. And I, uh, her, her Instagram, and I'm only mentioning that for her because... Uh, she's such a phenomenal person. Matter of fact, her, 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 I've watched her beautiful children go uh, get older, you know, from the, f the four or five years that I know. Her. She's, her, her kids are actually by one of the Wayne brothers. Really? Uh, yeah, but she, uh, Ursula Alberta, she's a former competitor. She's one of the top trainers uh, out there in L.A. And so the last gift I gave was that was uh, some bands I shipped out to her in L.A. Uh, last week. Wow. Coach, hey, you survived. You got through it, brother. You you got through yeah. the rounds, man, with no, <laughs> with, with no problem at all. Coach, I, I, I would like for you to uh, go ahead and, 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 and um, give everybody, um, you know, uh, everybody that would like to reach out to you. How, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, if somebody would like to, you know, uh, take a certification, I don't know if you offer certifications or, you know, whatever the case may be, but please let everybody know how they can get in contact with Coach Kelvin Moore. Well, actually, my web website's under construction again, but you can reach me at uh, Instagram at, at Coach Kelvin, C O A C H K E L V I N. My direct connect is 860, it's Connecticut area code, 250 9314. Uh, and I'm out presently, I've been here now four years. I live in uh, Loudoun County, Ashburn, Virginia. Uh, so I'm like 30 minutes outside of DC. 25, 30 minutes outside of Maryland. Uh, and um, I'd love to, again, the, the thing for me, Coach, I'm, I'm into that whole thing of like with your son, developing athletes. 
So even if you came to me with a skill set, even if you came to me with the potential, I got a six, eight kid out in Vegas that's about to fly out here next week, uh, you know, looking for a shot to get into the NBA, 22 years old. Uh, I'm trying to, if you know him, anybody that's out there, I sent a feeler out there to, to uh, uh, Chase Young, uh, who just got picked up by the Redskins. Oh, I got, yeah. and, and the thing about it is, Coach, I, wanna, I just want to give him a couple of free training sessions because I got two kids, a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old, who are diehard Chase Young Redskins fans. And if he signs a couple of footballs, I train him for a week for free. Ain't gonna be Wow. Okay. All right, Coach. I'm, I'm going to put the word out there because, you know, I know some a few people in D.C. I will yeah. tell you, so you will have one because my, 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 uh, my nephew that's coming, um, I don't care, man. I, I help name him anyways, but his name is going to be – his first name is going to be Epic. His middle name is Sincere Williams. Epic Sincere Williams. He's going to be coming. More like he's going to be a football player because his daddy played football. So uh -huh. get ready for him, Coach. Okay, and don't you forget that when oh. you're in town in July, uh, you know, because again, even though the, uh, the gyms are closed, you know, as one of the regional uh, trainers over some of the gyms, you know, I have some accessibility. So I want to I wanna get this working with your son and I'll make sure that I let uh, Gary Russell Sr. know so that, you know, even though the quarantine is up, if there's some gyms that are open, it's a private gym, we can get your son over there. I got him the gloves so we can actually meet them in person and i'll set all that up once you get in town hey man you know what uh I, i'm a lot of people love meeting fighters and i love meeting the fighters but i would just love to meet gary russell senior man because yeah you know what yeah. i'm saying i would love to talk to him i heard so much about him and i know for a fact he's he, he's choosy like me and he don't let anybody just walk in his house you kidding me man let me tell you something the first i would tell the story so we can get off the air coach the first when he told me about, you know, if I thought your stuff was garbage, I would have, wouldn't have never invited you back. But the first about six months to a year, man, I thought I was, and I was in the Marine Corps, and I had a presidential White House first class, first class clearance. But I thought, you know, like, what in the world is it going to take, man, to, for me to break bread with these brothers? And it was after one year later, uh, Gary, Gary Jr. said, man, come by the house, man, for, for a cookout. And when I got to the house, he brought me in the house. That's the first time I met his mother after a year. And we got in the house, he said, you family now. So yeah, they tight like right. But if you think about it, no disrespect to any trainers, Derek James, I met a lot of the guys that are out here of great notoriety. I met I, Floyd Mayweather Sr., we've sat down, talked, et cetera. But here's this man who put his, put his sons into a violent sport, risk-taking sport such as, as, as boxing. They're in the Guinness Book of World Records. Why? Because they're the only four brothers yeah. to win national championships and four different weight classes at the same time. That's number one. Number two, you've got two Olympians, one world champion and two on the way. And there is three brothers, me and Gary Jr. was talking about this. There is three brothers that all became world champions. But like I told Gary, they weren't from the United States. They're over there in Asia, China, something. There's three brothers. I can't think of the names off the top of my head. But they'll be the first who have three world champions in the same family. And this is all under the umbrella of their father, who was his, his boxing career was cut short because he got wounded in a hunting accident. And he spends all day, every day, six days a week working with his kids and you're absolutely right you, you you're not you're not getting in there uh, without the proper credentials and they, they take a while to see because they're very close to family right right well coach hey when i come over there i'm definitely we're gonna lead together and if you can make it possible i would love to meet gary russell senior without a doubt but diesel uh will be there you know um uh, bring strong as well my wife's gonna be there as well so maybe i can get my wife on the bands with you too finally yeah yeah, yeah. She, she be she she be with her group and I be watching her with her group keep doing her thing and so on and so forth. But I mean, and then as I said again, I have no age appropriate or gender appropriate drills. So what I do with Gary Russell, uh, and what I do with the with with uh the NFL linemen and all the other people that I work with, I'm gonna do some of the same things with the wife, et cetera, and along with the young man there, but just obviously making sure that safety is a paramount. But I can tell you right now, 
uh, his conditioning will be at a different level. That's what we want. That's what we want. I, it, that's what we want. That's what we're going to get. Well, hey, thank you for tuning in. This is Coach Stokes with the bandmaster himself, Coach Kevin Moore, my big brother. I'm going to talk to you later. I'm going to see you later. And we see you.